Sada je red na našeg drugog kino odgovornika. Predstavit ćemo vam osnivača i generalnog direktora kompanije Gen Ends Partners, Lijora Romanovskog. Lijor je mladi i inovativni preduzetnik koji dolazi iz Izraela. On je stručnjak za veštačku inteligenciju i virtualnu realnost i sarađuje sa kompanijama koje su na listi Fortune 500 Companies u kojima implementira inovativna tehnološka rešenja. Naziv njegovog predavanja je Artificially Talented Wanted. Lijor, please come to stage. Uživajte. Dobar den, right? So I have a clicker. Okay, so first of all, thank you for uh, joining me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking in English. My Serbian is a bit weak. Hope it's okay. Uh, what we're going to do uh, today, or what we're going to be talking today, is um, a little bit about my personal story with uh, Spartan AI. I'm going to start with uh, kind of uh, telling you how I'm even connected to Serbia, why I'm here. Um, a little bit about uh, what we're doing, about Jena, and also about this huge buzzword called uh, artificial intelligence. Um, first of all, about myself. So, Lior Manovsky, 31 years old. Uh, for me, Spartan AI is my fifth uh, venture. I'm originally from uh, Jerusalem, live in Tel Aviv. Uh, as you know, Israel is basically a startup nation, so we do a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and when I was building uh, Spartans uh, about two years ago, um, I started to look for partners, people that can work with me and really kind of uh, grow with me something impressive. And I decided that I'm going to be focusing on artificial intelligence. And when I was uh, looking for those brilliant people that can join me, uh, I found one. Okay, one of them. And uh, one of them, it actually sits here. Milan, can you raise your hand? Okay, so Milan Jelkovic is actually the reason that I'm uh, here in uh, Serbia. Um, he's one of the first people that joined the company. And, uh, you know, in, in the world of startups and technology, it's very hard to find people that you can trust, that are really professional, that uh, they can run as fast as you are. And uh, because of Milan, basically, we're here today. We have a branch in uh, Belgrade uh, that is growing really rapidly. Uh, so we have uh, some other team members that are here on the side. And I can tell you that I'm super impressed from uh, Serbians and the talent that you have. So it's a young market, but uh, you know, I'm saying to myself, uh, Israel, watch out, uh, because uh, Serbia is growing. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so this is kind of a little bit of background uh, story. So when I started the company, uh, we, we were growing pretty fast, we were pretty successful, we were working with different companies, making money, uh, which making money is like kind of uh, the base uh, for a successful uh, company. And uh, pretty fast we had to hire a product manager. And, um, you know, as uh, sometimes you are posting in Facebook or LinkedIn and so on, uh, so we posted a, a position on Facebook, on one of the groups, and we got 270 candidates. Now, I don't know when was the last time that somebody, one of you, maybe some of you already kind of reviewed 270 candidates, but it's not fun. Uh, you're very excited. You say, yeah, wow, I got 270 candidates. Uh, but after reviewing 40, 50, you say, wow, okay. <laughs> That's not going to work. Um, and time after time, after reading their CVs, we understood that there's a lot of information that is lacking. We don't really get all the answers that we want. Um, and, uh, you know, 99% of the people say that they don't like uh, reviewing a lot of CVs. Actually, we didn't ask anybody, but I can, we, let's assume that nobody likes uh, reviewing just a lot of CVs and a lot of papers, right? Nobody. Um, so, when we were thinking about how we can solve it, instead of reviewing so many CVs, how we can approach it in a smarter way, we said, okay, we are doing artificial intelligence, why won't we build something that will automate and will do it for us, right? And um, we started to think, uh, what does it mean a good product manager? What does it mean? What we're looking for? Uh, so if, the, if uh, somebody doesn't know, this is Gal Gadot, okay, she's an Israeli star, Wonder Woman. Um, so we were, we were pretty much looking for Wonder Woman. 
We were looking for somebody professional, somebody that knows what she's doing, entrepreneurial. One of the things that are very important in, in Spartans and also in Jena is that people will be entrepreneurial, that they will be problem solvers, that they won't be afraid from challenges because this is like one of the core elements of being an entrepreneur or even working in a startup. You need always, there are always challenges. So we created some kind of a list. And we said, okay, how do we find those people uh, automatically, faster, better, without the need of reviewing hundreds of CVs, right? So uh, we started. We started from building uh, a simple technological solution, a chatbot, that was asking questions that we already predefined. We kind of wrote a list of questions that we wanted to ask our audience, which our audience is basically candidates. And uh, we launched it. So in the same group, we posted it again, with a link to the chatbot and said, okay, you know what, let's see what happens. And uh, magically enough, we actually saw that the results were amazing. So instead of getting 270 candidates, we got 40. And out of those 40, we saw that the percentage of candidates that were really uh, relevant was amazing. So 90% of those uh, 40 candidates actually answered all the questions. We saw that they're high quality candidates and we said, wow, okay, there is something. And not only we said, wow, there is something, we actually hired our first product manager, Alona, through this chatbot, okay? And it was kind of, you know, it was, wow, we can automate it, we don't need the CVs. And, you know, if you think about, you know, a CV, yeah? anybody knows, by the way, uh, who invented the CVs? It's a story, but who, anybody knows? Okay, Leonardo da Vinci. Somewhere there, right? He is known to be the one that uh, had the first concept of a professional CV. We're in 2018, right? And we're still getting our applications with uh, something, with uh, a piece of paper that, uh, you know, brings us a very kind of limited information. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. It's most of the times it's not really answering the questions of uh, the, 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 the companies that are hiring. And it uh, doesn't do justice also to the candidates. Because just think about yourself as a candidate. You put on a piece of paper some information about yourself, some, what you learned, what you did, and this is you, that's it. It doesn't really help the companies understand if somebody is relevant or not. Because you are much more than just a piece of paper. So right, there is also the other, other steps. But if the first step is already uh, making the companies miss you because you don't know how to write their CV, or just because the keyword wasn't right enough, or so on, you know, we screwed up. So, just a, a little bit of numbers about the world of recruitment, which is a world that before we actually started this uh, trial, we didn't know anything about. And we, after we started to investigate, we saw that we were successful with our attempt. So we said, wow, we're probably not the only ones that have this problem. Like, probably there are so many companies out there that, uh, you know, they just hate CV. But they still work with it because this is the standard, right? So here you have a couple of numbers. This is actually from North America, from the North American market. It's different, of course, from country to country to country. But just to help you understand what magnitude of problem we have. So we have, in average, we have 250 candidates per one open position. As you can understand, the world is growing, right? The world is growing, things are getting more optimized, which means that will be less positions. The competition per open position will be bigger and bigger and bigger. It's already 250. Let's say 10 years from now, probably it's gonna be more, right? So it's already a lot of candidates to review. And what happens now, and uh, I don't know, who is here like from HR? Somebody? We have some, okay, cool. So, uh, a lot of times what happens is even when you get like some good candidates or you already have like enough uh, people to review, you kind of stop. You don't really review all the long tail that you're getting. And this is a lot of people and there's a lot of people that are being missed in that way. So. You have 250 candidates, probably gonna have a long, uh, long tail, okay, that you don't review. A big cost of hiring, so the recruitment or the recruiters are spending a lot of time on initial screening. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hustle, a lot of papers, okay, a lot of mess. And we're in 2018, it shouldn't be like that. 
and 42 uh, days on average of hiring. Of course, again, it's a difference between uh, industry to industry, uh, between country to country, but you get the idea, okay? It takes a long time. So, what did we do? So, we in Spartans, one of the things that we're doing is that we're growing products that are growing to companies. This is the strategy. This is the overall strategy to build top-notch products that transform themselves afterwards to companies. So it's basically kind of an own accelerator of companies, right? So Jenna, that started from a POC inside of us, right? So we had a need. We understood ourselves that there is something wrong in our process, and then we built a solution. We transformed it to a company. So Jenna now is a separate company uh, at Delaware, an American company, uh, that uh, focuses on the utilization of artificial intelligence for the world of recruitment. And if you're gonna do, if you're gonna be more specific, we want to solve the initial screening and afterwards to automate, or not to automate, but to enhance overall the recruitment, uh, recruitment process entirely using artificial intelligence, okay? And the first thing that we did, and the first focus that we're doing, is actually on the initial screening. Why? Because we understand that there is a critical problem there, that we have a lot of candidates, we are lacking in information, even if you like a candidate, uh, a candidate CV, you will call him and ask him following questions. So instead of that, we, say, we said, like, why, would artificial, why wouldn't artificial intelligence do it? So what you see here is just an example, right? It's a mock, but this is how it behaves. So the candidate interacts textually with uh, Jenna. Every company has its own Jenna, so it's a SaaS platform. It serves enterprises and uh, smaller companies like startups and medium and up. Um, and every company has its own Jenna that interacts with the candidates. Now, after Jenna interacts with the candidates and asks questions, professional questions, personal questions, and so on, it gives them a rank. And not just a rank, it doesn't mean, okay, you're, you know what, you're for. No. It looks at on the other candidates that pass the screening and gives a relative score, right? What does it mean? It means that recruiters have a smarter, faster solution uh, to initial screening. So instead of reviewing hundreds of candidates, they're reviewing only the people that are relevant. Now, I get a lot of a question, but who decides that they're relevant, right? It's a legit question. So actually, the recruiters themselves, the company that knows who they're looking for, are defining it. And how? So that's the process. So as you see, it's, uh, it's a system. Okay, so it's not just like a, a, a front, it's not like just a mobile or a so on, but it's a system. So there's the side of a recruiter, there's the side of a hiring side, and there's the side of the, uh, the candidate. So on the side of a recruiter, they have a system that allows them to define, okay, these are the type of people that I'm looking for, professionally, personally, personality-wise, and so on, and to define it to Jenna, and Jenna will identify it in the answers that the candidate is giving. Is the, can is the answers are enough? Hell no. So when the, the candidate is giving us uh, LinkedIn information, if we're getting like uh, third-party information and so on, by the way, it differs from, com uh, from country, country to country because of uh, all kind of uh, privacy regulations, of course, and this is, this is an issue that it's for another talk. But in the bottom line, we have a streamlined, uh, a streamlined way for candidates to apply to positions. Now, do candidates like it? They love it. And there's a simple reason to do it. If you think about yourself as a candidate, when you send just a CV, it's pretty much unknown. Why? You just, you just sent it. First of all, it's very easy, right? You just send a CV, low engagement. Second thing, you don't really understand what the company is looking for, right? There's the description, there's the requirements, da, 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 da. But when you are being asked relevant questions to the position, there are many times that the candidates themselves stop and they understand, okay, I'm not relevant, or this position doesn't interest me. Oh, I understand that according to this question, it's not, you know, it's not for me. I understand that. So after it happens, so after the left side happens, the recruiter is getting all the information about the best candidates, he can contact them, he can message them, and so on. So that's, this is Jenna, and Jenna is already serving a couple of dozens uh, of uh, customers around the world. We're focusing on the North American market, I know. Uh, and it definitely something that uh, we're growing.
So in terms of AI, and this is like a, a little bit of transition from the world of Jenna and what we are doing uh, to a little bit of artificial intelligence uh, with your permission. <coughs> So artificial intelligence is a huge password, right? We hear artificial intelligence, neural network, machine learning. We have we uh, hear companies talking about artificial intelligence like it's a, you know, uh, like it's a shawarma in the in the market. Like yeah, we do artificial intelligence, but uh, you know, in Hebrew we have a word uh, called the tachlis. Tachlis is like you know, don't bullshit me. So without bullshit, let's talk about a little bit about artificial intelligence and where we are, right? So first of all, artificial intelligence will definitely change the world that we're living. And in many ways, it's already changing. If it's automation, if it's uh, smart interactions, if it's automotive, right? So automotive is an industry with a lot of money. A lot of money goes to uh, kind of automation and autonomous cars and so on, which all of them are pretty much like branches of artificial intelligence, which is great, right? So we already see kind of uh, implementations from artificial intelligence. To, uh, to reach kind of a benchmark for a young company, to reach a benchmark where it's a groundbreaking technology, it's hard. So artificial intelligence is a hard technology. It's still not where, you know, I remember myself uh, when I was a kid uh, 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 watching Terminator. Okay, anybody watch Terminator here? Yeah, yeah, okay. So Terminator, you know, this is how we envision artificial intelligence. And this is many times uh, why people don't really perceive uh, artificial intelligence as artificial intelligence. Where we, uh, when we think about AI, we think about robots, think the, uh, things that are thinking for themselves. They can do everything. You ask a question, they're bam, telling you. And this is why we're also very disappointed when we, hear, we tell, uh, tell Siri, hey Siri, uh, who is Leo Romanovsky? And then, he, she's, uh, then she says, ah, who is Bill Cosby? You know, those kind of things, those kind of mistakes, it's like, why? Isn't it AI? So, AI is AI, but there's still a lot of uh, place to grow. So, we are in a phase where we teach a machine, we show a machine many things, like in machine learning, we show a lot of examples, so in the next time that the machine will see or perceive something, she will know how to react. So it's not that it's like totally general artificial. There's a, a, a term called general inter artificial intelligence, which means that, for example, how we envision the Terminator, right? He knows everything, he can do everything, and so on. We're not there yet. But let's talk about where we're going to be, okay? I know the future is now, but let's uh, see how we're going to be in a couple of years. So first of all, the financial impact, and you can see like this, those are estimations. You know, McKinsey they, they, they does some uh, estimations, PwC. It's so many years from now, so they can throw basically any, any number. But the impact on the, the financial districts or the financials of uh, the world is tremendous. Think about artificial intelligence that automates manufacturing. Think about uh, uh, reducing deaths. Right? Using artificial intelligence. One of the things that we are going to tackle in the company is prevention of uh, uh, infections in the hospitals. And there's so many things that you can implement artificial intelligence, even in the more basic forms of machine learning and showing what is right and what is wrong. And by the way, if we're going to step back for a second for Jenna, one of the things that we're doing with artificial intelligence is actually to show what will be a good, uh, uh, what will be a good uh, candidate for this kind of position. So in the future, the recruiter won't even need to input too many information because we already know what kind of uh, what kind of uh, candidates with what kind of answers with what kind of experience will really be the best uh, candidates for a company of that type right so if we talk about enterprises, right? Enterprises are, ex except if we're talking about like, you know, startups and so on, but enterprises are, you know, the powerful beasts that uh, push uh, industries and uh, technology forward as well. So as you can see that already, a big chunk of enterprises already think about artificial intelligence or already implement it. Now, sometimes it's in the simplest form. Some, uh, sometimes it's collaborating with companies like Google, with IBM, that they uh, kind of integrate all kind of tools that they have for artificial intelligence, but that's a start. There are tons of processes inside of different in in uh, industries and enterprises that can be automated in a smart way, and we are talking about automation, smart automation here, okay? I'm going to uh, end, and I know that it's going to be shorter, but it's, you know, I prefer it's going to be short and to the point. So I'm going to end my things with a couple of things. Uh, 
first of all, artificial intelligence. It's a technology that is growing. In terms of the world of recruitment and HR, we understand that artificial intelligence will be able to help us to connect better skills with companies and allow companies to hire better people or better fit people to their organization, reduce time to hire, which time to hire, by the way, is one of the major KPIs of uh, companies. Okay, how much time it will take me to hire somebody and somebody that will actually stay and the company will benefit from him. And there are other elements in the HR that will, uh, will uh, uh, generate a lot of success for it. Uh, for example, sourcing. Sourcing is a, world, a word that even uh, the or world that even the large companies are struggling with. So you have a huge pool of candidates, right? Some of them you are not going to hire immediately, but there is a huge pool that you already screened, you already got their details. So why not to utilize it? Artificial intelligence is progressing and part of the future is definitely it. Thank you very much.